We're moving down now to our type tool right down here, horizontal type tool. There we go. Now with the type tool, you have several options. Right over here we have the horizontal or standard regular old type, vertical type where, where it types it in vertically, a type mask tool, horizontal and vertical. The type mask tools basically create a selection in the shape of your type. It allows you to put things into the shape of your type or to remove things, you know, delete things from your picture in the shape of your type. We also have a text on a selection tool and text on a shape tool and then text on a custom path tool. Now I have a whole batch of videos coming up here later on in part three of our training where I'll look at all of these tools. We'll look, we'll look at these very carefully in that training. So let's just take a look and just focus on using the basic type tool in this video and then we'll come back to everything else a little later on. To use the type tool, it's real easy. Just go over to your picture and click and it creates a type layer. See, there's our new type layer, layer three. And if I begin typing here, make sure I spell that right. There we go. It actually comes in and then just types it right onto the screen. Now the size it comes in at is the size right here. I can change that size if I want to. If I have my type selected, let's just do that. 36, there we go. A little larger, 48 maybe. The type face it's in is from our list over here. Let's say I have samples on the right hand side. A little hard to see here, kind of small. But it gives you a sample of what the text will look like. Now all of these, all this lettering in here, all this stuff, this is the type fonts that I have on my computer. Your list will be different depending upon what you have on your computer. You'll probably have a lot of these, but you probably won't have everything. But you can just go through and choose any type you want. If the typeface has different options in here, you can choose those different styles. Let me just go here to Arial, which has several styles. There we go. Narrow, regular, italic, bold, and bold italic. So there's a bold italic just like that. And let's go back up to, it just kind of seems to fit. Leading is the spacing between lines if you have multiple lines. Color, of course, you can change right here. If you're doing a whole paragraph, you can left align, center, or right align right there. You can make the text bold, italic, underline, or strike through. So you have these options as well. Plus down here, we can toggle our text orientation. There's vertical and there's horizontal. And we can create warped text. You can actually bend the text around in a warped fashion using the warped text dialog box. We have a whole video on doing that, so we'll save that for later. When you're all set, click on the check mark and then place that, that type. And notice the type is its own little graphic piece. You can actually move that around anywhere you want to. Now, along with placing the text on the page, after it's on here, you can modify this text using these control handles. This is something that you can't do in most graphics programs. In most programs, you're stuck with the type as is, unless you use tools like that warp text tool to warp the text. But here, I can stretch the text if I want to, like that. And I can make it wider or shorter. I even can rotate the text, describe it, and I can rotate the text around anywhere I want to. So we have all these great tools in here, standard tools, that we have for use inside of the Adobe Photoshop Elements program after the type is, is made. So it, it kind of works like a graphic and it kind of works like type. If you want to change what it says, just go back to your type tool and then click on your type, reselect it, and you then can change what it says. You can change what you ha you've typed. Right now we're sitting on the white or above the white background rather. Let me just hide the white background and just bring in our background. And there that is on that background bit. Kind of hard to see, but I, I could put a, a graphic in behind that or a frame in behind that or something so we could then actually see that text. Let's just demonstrate that quickly. Let me bring in our, our white layer here and I'll shrink the white layer down a little bit. There we go. Squeeze that in. Of 
and there's our text sitting on a little white graphic. So you need to have something in behind it. You can do that by putting a shape behind your text. Now here's an example where I'm having a problem with this thing auto selecting. Let's just undo the auto select. I want to get that box in behind and it's trying to force me to select that type. So there is one example of where you might not want to have the auto select. Also notice that this is kind of snapping to the edge of the type. Little snap effect happening. That's up here under the view menu and that's snap to. I'm going to snap, I'm going to uncheck snap to document bounds and that should allow me a little more, no, not quite. I'm just going to uncheck all of our snap options. That should do it. I think it was layers was the problem. Okay, now I can be a little more precise on my positioning on this. Not going to be trying to bump itself up against that type. So there we go. That's working with the type layer or putting in type. Again, we're going to come back to this and spend a lot more time with type in a later section of discussions and have a little more fun with this. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. And finally, you can get all of my training videos on DVD at howtogurus.com. Thanks again for watching.